In this video, I want to take a look at two features within Studio One. The first one is input quantize. More specifically, what it is and when you might consider wanting to use it. So I have an instance of Impact XT. Let's go into my trusty 808 kit preset just so we have something to kind of play around with. Now, full disclosure, I am not the greatest at finger drumming. There are people who are amazing on MPC style pads. There are people who are amazing on a basic MIDI keyboard and can, you know, play complex rhythms in time with complex timing, adding swing, giving them their own feel. I'm not that good. It's something that I'm practicing and I'm hoping to get better. But in those cases where you have to lay something down, Thankfully, we have some cheat codes that we can use in the form of uh, being able to apply groove templates and being able to edit our MIDI and adjust velocities to make them sound better. That being said, if you need to basically program something, even just a simple beat, and you find it hard to mouse it in or mouse click it in, there's a really easy way that we can basically make life easy for ourselves is if we enable input quantize. So let's bring this in, and I need to make sure that my click is not blaringly loud. I usually like to pull it down to about minus 10. Okay, so I'm going to record enable this and we're at 120 BPM. Let's have a listen to how that sounds with a click. Make sure my click is active. There we go. So let's actually first take it off and I'm going to just use my, I can use either my Atom or my Atom SQ. And I wanna see, um, let, let me just try to do basic hi-hats to start off with. So I'm going to give myself a pre-count, this option over here, Shift C. This will give me, depending on what I have set over here, I've got one bar pre-count. So I'm gonna push the record button and then I'm just going to try and we're gonna play along to the click and I'm gonna see how good I can do it. Okay, so actually that wasn't too bad. Let me, let's zoom in and have a look. Okay, so I'm a little early on some stuff, but nevertheless, here's a double trigger over here. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, so that's not bad. And like I say, this is something that I'm working at um, and, and hoping to get better at. But let's take another shot. This time I'm gonna leave one bar in between. This time I'm going to put input quantize on. Now let's do the same thing again. We have our one bar pre-count. So notice what happened over here. I'm gonna just double click to zoom this into view. Because I had this set, this means that anything that I play, as long as it's relatively in time, it is going to be quantizing this to the grid. So even if I play something and it's not perfect timing, if we listen to this against the click, and we listen to the first one, so in the case where you want to basically program something, and this is especially useful if you are running takes and your instrument loop record mode is set to record mix. I tend to work like this a lot where I will basically just loop a section over top of here and then I will do one pass, usually starting off with something like hi-hats and then I'll come back and I'll do, for example, the kick or something like that. So with input quantize on, actually let's go back to our first example and we'll make sure that that's looped first and we'll kind of zoom this into view. I'm gonna take input quantize off. I actually have this mapped out to a key command. And then I'm going to do one pass with like a kick and then the other pass I'll do uh, with a clap, but I'm gonna let this loop around. Okay, so there it is right now. It's pretty messy. If we listen to it against the click. Now, it might be that if I turn off the click, it actually sounds okay. Not really. It doesn't sound okay. But that's okay, because we can edit MIDI. 
Okay, so by the end of it, usually that's what happens is by the last half, I kind of lock into things. Now again, we'll do the exact same thing. I'm gonna turn input quantize on. We'll loop this, we'll go with the same pre-count and I'm gonna program the exact same thing. Okay, so this one, because I had input quantize on, everything was kind of forced to the grid. And like I say, you still have to be kind of accurate. Like it's not gonna bring it to the proper quantize value if you were completely off, but it can help. And if your goal is to program or quantize 100% to a grid, that is a really good thing to be able to use. All right, so that's the first tip is input quantize quantizing it gets a bad rap but but there's a lot of things that you can do if for example your velocities have different variations and they kind of feel natural then that can be even if you're 100 percent quantized to a grid even having really decent uh, velocity especially when you have pickups on kick patterns and especially for things like for example hi-hats and you can edit these further i could manipulate this to bring up certain elements even more like this, but having that velocity, um, not all just being full level, that can really, really help. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is AQ. And this is something that sometimes I have it on, sometimes I don't. Um, when I first used Studio One though, I didn't really understand it and it, it messed me up a lot. And I think it's important to understand what it does. So when you have automatically quantize selected notes. Let's take a look at what that does. So for example, this can work on either all the notes, if the, if all of them are selected, or if I just have, for example, like one lane, I could come into my presets. I'm gonna just click the quantize button, and then I have grid or groove. Now I've got a lot of different presets, but for example, if I take a look at uh, Lindrum over here, if I have this option selected and I choose any one of these, let's choose uh, Lindrum 16 Swing D. Keep an eye on these notes. The minute I click this, and if I was to click, let me undo that and let's click something else. Let's click this. The minute I click anything, as long as they're selected, they're following. Okay, I'm gonna undo everything maybe there, okay, so we'll go to this step. Now, if I have this off, I would actually either have to um, choose something and click apply, let's undo that, or click Q, and that would do everything. Or if I had just these ones selected over here, I would first have to choose this from the menu, and then once it's chosen, then I would actually have to apply it. But when you have something like this, for example, uh, selected and you have auto quantize, you have this option turned on. If I go back into grid, so watch what happens if I select all of these and I start dialing up the swing. Notice how the minute I was done adjusting this parameter, notice how they just moved. I didn't actually have to click apply because anything that is selected if I choose anything, any one of these values, it will automatically quantize them. Now, in some cases, I think this is a good thing, but what I tend to do when I have auto quantize on is I will, for example, click something, and actually it's better if I do it with the whole entire performance. Let me actually do this one. This one was hard quantized because we had input quantize on. So let's do the same example here. I'm gonna select all these node events and because these are selected and automatically quantized selected notes is on, if I choose any one of these, notice that that moved over. Now I'm gonna undo. Maybe I'll try uh, swing F. Now these are small minute changes and sometimes it's hard to see them, but when I am working this way, I'm always doing uh, a constant undo and redo. Now let's go into the 909 and let's, for example, go uh, 16th. Note. Even when you take a look at some of these presets, even though it says straight, you can watch there's, there's some subtle shifts. I'm gonna redo and undo. Let's take a look at this one here, undo, redo. Um, let's go back to straight. Now, if I go to this one, notice that, that shift again, and I will listen. And if I don't like it, I'll undo it 
and I'll try something else. So when you have this particular preference on where uh, AQ auto quantize the selected notes, that's one thing that I will constantly do is I'll toggle back and forth between undo and then redo. And if I don't like it, I'll make sure that I always undo it and I can go back and forth. So that is kind of like a really good starting point. And another thing to do is when you're working with this, um, one other thing I like doing is I go to the action and I will actually freeze my quantize values. So if, for example, I was wanting to make some changes, I might highlight everything and let's start with everything quantized to a hard 16th note. So just straight on the grid. So now everything is completely straight on the grid if we listen to it against the click. So that is plain. There's no swing or anything like that. I would actually come into where it says action and then I would freeze the quantize. And this basically makes it the new starting point as if though it was recorded that way. And that way, if I have auto quantize on and I'm going through some of these and maybe I apply something that's just way too much. Like, let's go to, um, let's go to, uh, which one is it over here? Let's go to something like, I don't know, let's go for broke and we'll do this. So maybe I'm going through these all. I have auto quantize on and I'm selecting things. I want to do something that kind of messes it up. Okay. So here, for example, this totally changed or altered the timing and I didn't know what it was that I was doing. It's because we froze our quantize value. Then anytime we fire off the, where is it here? Uh, it is restore timing, which is shift Q. If we were to fire that off, it's going to bring us back to where we froze our MIDI timing in terms of the new starting point as if though it was recorded that way. So that's one tip is if you are using auto quantize and you're kind of going through these to make sure that before you do it, that uh, you basically just freeze your quantize values. Or if you're happy with something, but you want to explore a little bit further, again, freeze your quantize values ahead of time, just so you can kind of go through and addition these different grooves and stuff and these different swing values. And if you find something that you like, or if you go too far, then you can always go back to where you left off. And it's either that or quite simply just creating a, an alternate copy and working off of the copy or leaving this as an original. You can even rename this and call it like original, something like that, whatever works for you. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.